Hi everyone. So uh, I got this um, message on Twitter yesterday from uh, Matt Moylan and he sent me a bunch of screenshots from an Avengers comic from uh, 2000 and basically showed how it was basically like the first hint of social justice warrior uh, type of thinking at Marvel. Although there have been aspects of it, but the funny thing is to see what, I was going to say a couple of years, but it's actually been a while. <laughs> this came out like right before I went to boot camp. Uh, so that was a while ago. Um, but it's an Avengers, first of all, I got to track this down. Not only does it look like a cool story, but it's a hundred pages. Like, I don't know how I've never heard of this before until now. I googled it, I read some reviews, and this is a great run, but it's kind of, I don't know, falling down the memory hole, Kurt Busiek, and <laughs> it was one of those runs, I remember it, but I was always busy, because it was like boot camp to SOI, to being a boot, to being deployed, so I, I would just get to the comic shop and just grab whatever. I would... I, that actually, that actually kind of killed my comic collecting for a little while until things calmed down. But um, this is so interesting to see the thoughts expressed and how they are 100% the opposite now. Um, <coughs> so um, this is 20, 2000. It was right when Casada really took over and it was a couple years after an industry crash. And this crash, I was a fan before, during, and after it, and it was <laughs> dire. People were talking about, this is the end. This is the end of the comics industry. It's just going to peter on for a couple more years, and then it's going to die. Because remember, this is 2000. This is before the movies got big. This is before the X-Men movie came out. This is before Spider-Man. Blade had come out like the year before, but not even the sequel. That just looked like a one-off. The whole mainstream uh, acceptance of the Marvel Universe and comic books and superheroes becoming mainstream, that was still a couple years later. These are still the days of the spinner racks. And um, the funny thing is, even in these dire straits, even right after a huge crash that everyone said was the last crash because the industry was about to be dead, the comic books were 20 times better. They sold five times as much. They were, they, they were so good that great entire runs could be forgotten because there were so many good runs from this time. But anyway, getting back to the brass tacks of this. So in this we get, um, it's another era of the Avengers having a, uh, um, a government liaison, kind of like uh, Peter Henry uh, Gyrick, the uh, red-headed flat-top guy who basically looked like Jim Shooter. Um, so we got this guy, actually blanking on his name, I think it's Wesley or something like that. And um, he's d two things bothered me. <laughs> the first, okay, so sidebar. Uh, earlier today, I was on some, you know, whatever news report, and they do like the kind of like the clickbait articles. And it was uh, NYU librarian um, is uh, blogs about race ex exhaustion. Race exhaustion is uh, she's a she's a black librarian, and she went to a. a of librarian convention, which just must have been crazy. And uh, she said she, uh, after a couple days, she couldn't take all the white faces anymore. This is not on the onion. This is something that five years ago would have been considered extremist. And I read stuff like this ev all the time. I actually, the funny thing is that there's been this redefinition of racism uh, to which literally it's almost like when. Um, George Lucas in, introduced midichlorians. When I was a kid and the first three Star Wars movies came out, episodes four, five, and six, um, the general understanding was that anyone could uh, use the force if you just really tried and you got some training. Then uh, George Lucas had to get all comic book nerd about it, and then he's like, well, then why doesn't everyone just train to have the force? So he made it midichlorians. So it was like, like, subatomic um, <coughs> uh, things in your bloodstream and that lets you t uh, you know uh, tap into the force basically racism has been redefined as like it's almost like midichlorians it's like racism is a particle that's like that emanates out of the skin of white people <laughs> they're because uh so they're like uh you can't be racist if you're not white something like that anyway so 
they have one of the uh, big uh, membership drives, and this uh, government liaison is being <coughs> very politically correct in a very gross and grimy way. And the cool thing is that all of the Avengers, who are already diverse, are all getting angry at this pathetic um, uh, pandering towards different groups. And they say flat out, we've been diverse for decades. Well, in, their, in, their, in the reality of their book, years. So um, they basically hit back, and the guy gets very grimy. He's like, we've cut down the amount of mutants, which is good, because that appeals like to people who hate mutants. But we have one mutant... So that'll help with the people who like mutants. And he's like, we need a black guy. We need a black guy. The guy is black. And they're just like, and they're getting pissed. They're like, look, we've had black members before. We don't have one now. Uh, but yeah. And then um, they called the Falcon. It's re It was really nice to have the Marvel heroes actually stand up for actual progressive ideals, which is um, evaluating people, not on their skin tone, but on their merit and them saying, we don't have to justify ourselves to you, you know, pseudo progressive racists who only want surface level stuff. And I've been doing some more driving and I've been actually thinking about a lot of stuff. There's a lot of weird stuff. SJW Marvel is not just about saying like, oh, here's our gay character. Here's our pseudo trans character, Captain Marvel. Here's our Muslim character. They've actually leached all of the character out of everything. And one thing... I'm working on it's how they've taken romance out of comics entirely you you look at all the you know comic book characters the classic ones the cis white males that we have to uh, uh, eliminate or um, uh, replace um, every single character you name you can think of their their great love and the story about it you go Spider-Man Mary Jane you go Matt Murdock Electra you go uh Iron Man, everyone. <laughs> you know, Wolverine, Mariko. Uh, <clears throat> Bruce Banner, Betty. Uh, and uh, it just comes out to you, like, it's literally like throwing a rubber ball at a wall. You you say it and you and you immediately come back with their, you know, their big uh, romance. It's like Kamala Khan, bah, nothing. Uh, Captain Marvel, bah. Uh, um, uh, Let's see, just all of them, you know, like all of the SJW characters, not like not only is it post adventure, they don't even have adventures. It's also post romance. And I actually read a really, really long article with Frank Miller, like back in the 90s and uh, or it was from the 90s. And uh, he was saying that uh, the essence of adventure fiction is romance. And he said the same thing I would said, you name every adventure character. And you will immediately come back. That rubber ball will bounce back with the romantic uh, character that's like the crux of the whole story. You say Robin Hood made Marion. Did you? You didn't even have to think about it. It just bounced back to you. Rubber ball bouncing back. Anyway, getting back to this thing is the the writer of it was Kurt Busiek, and uh, Kurt Busiek uh, was probably the classic like standard superhero guy. He's turned into a Huge SJW, as pretty much they all have. And as someone pointed out, when I was calling Bendis an SJW, they said Bendis just does whatever gets him money. They go, 10 years ago when that, you had all the Brits writing, when it, when it was Garth Ennis and Mark Mil Millar and uh, Warren Ellis, and it was all about shock and extreme sexuality and extreme violence, that's what Bendis was doing. And now it's SJW, so that's what Bendis is doing. Kurt Busiek, he's had some health problems. He's kind of... Faded. I don't really understand why he doesn't get more work because he's still very active on Twitter and he's still treated as an emeritus. But anyway, Kurt Busiek, obviously, the thing is that this, the way he wrote back then, uh, superhero comics were were written to be mainstream. They were written to be 7-Eleven, the grocery store, Kroger or H-E-B or Randall's, depending on what uh, part of the country uh, you're in. Um, it was a mainstream uh, tone. It was they were mainstream books. They were for regular people. Now it's twisted into like this, basically like weirdo incestuous echo chamber group. Uh, that and that's why it's gotten so small, and that's why it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But at the time, Kurt Busiek was very much. He was just that bone deep comic book guy who could 
you know, quote you chapter and verse on, you know, uh, Silvermane and every, all the different chess chassis he had. Silvermane was this like 70 year old mobster that was like a cyborg. Um, and he had silver hair. Um, but he was just like that guy and he would, he would bring back old characters and revive him. There's a great picture here where Warbird is sitting like, she's like talking to the principal and they're doing a recruitment drive and basically Iron Man's like, hey, I got someone that's a good uh, fit for your, you know, politically correct, uh, you know, diversity roster. She's got some issues though. She's uh, had some problems. She's had some alcoholism. God, you look at Captain, or not, uh, what was she, Warbird back then. Great costume, beautiful wide hips, big boobs, beautiful face, long flowing hair. She looks great, but she also had some problems. She had some adversity that she had to overcome. This is deep blue hero stuff, and they've gotten rid of any... SJWs have gotten rid of mythos, they've gotten rid of romance, and they've, got, they've gotten rid of the, the bravery of struggle and adversity. And it's all just Sesame Street virtue signaling, patting themselves on the back, these namby-pamby characters who can't even handle 